today we are talking about the concept of a mole. Now, we've heard of terms used to group things together, like saying a dozen eggs. And we know that a, if we said a dozen eggs, then we mean 12 eggs. If I said I had a dozen pencils, then I would have 12 pencils. We know that dozen means 12. So we're talking about a quantity with this term dozen. If I said I had a dozen cars, how many do I have? 12. If I had a dozen calculators, I have 12. So we know that this term implies 12. If I said I had a pair of shoes, this is another example where a pair implies that I have two. If I had a pair of socks, I would have two socks, a pair of mittens, two mittens. So this is similar in chemistry terms. We can say that we have a mole of something, and a mole of something implies that we have this really large number, 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd of that substance. Now, it could be atoms, it could be ions, it could be molecules, it could be particles. It's still a method of counting how many we have. So the mole, or the abbreviated MOL in chemistry, is chemistry's counting unit. This number is called Avogadro's number. Now, like I said, it's a counting unit. If I had a dozen cars or a dozen pencils, those are two very different things, but I know that there's still 12 of that. So I can say that I have a mole of carbon, and that means that I have 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd carbon atoms. If I had a mole of water particles, I have 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd water particles. So if I said I had one mole of copper ions, I would have 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd copper ions. So it is a counting unit. Now, this is a really big number, really big. It would be like taking 602,000 times a million, times a million again, and times another million. If we wrote it out, Look how big this number is. Thank goodness we have scientific notation. So we can write it as 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd. Now it's such a big number because it's not like we can see uh, with our dozen eggs. We can see our 12 eggs and we can count those individually to verify. But we cannot see one carbon atom or one water particle or one copper ion, they are just too small to see. So we have to have a whole lot of them in one group to be able to quantify that. So 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd atoms, particles, ions, molecules of any, any of those is equal to one mole of that. So to give you an example of how many that number is, that's 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd. If I said I had one mole of softballs, so if I had 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd softballs, it would occupy the size of the earth all the way, like the whole inside of the earth, it would take up the whole earth. It would create another earth. If you had this many marbles, so think about the size of a marble in comparison to a softball. That would take up the space, or would be the volume of the size of the moon. If I had one mole of Olympic shot puts, it would weigh the same or have the same mass as that of Earth. Let that sink in. That is just insane. If I have one mole of hydrogen atoms laid side by side, 
So one mole of hydrogen atoms laid side by side, it would circle the Earth about one million times, going around and around and around and around, one million times if I had a mole of hydrogen atoms. So definitely a lot larger quantity than a dozen or a pair, but it is a quantity, looking at how many of something there is. So with that, we are able to make a new conversion factor. And this is going to come in handy in the whole rest of this course and in chemistry in general. It allows us to start thinking um, this quantity and start to kind of put it into perspective. So if I know that I have 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd atoms of sodium, which is equal to one mole, I can put it in a conversion factor like this, or I can flip that numerator and denominator around and I could write it like this. So knowing this, I want you to try to do this calculation. How many sodium atoms are in 0 0.240 moles of sodium? And we're gonna solve this using unit analysis. So we're going to write down what we're starting with, and we know that's 0 0.240 moles. We can abbreviate MOL of Na. It is important to write this whole piece down. And then we're going to, okay, it's asking us to find atoms, and we have moles. So we need to go, okay, well, my conversion factor, we know that for every one mole of anything is 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd. It's asking for atoms. atoms. And we also know that we can make write the reciprocal of this, and we can say, well, that's also equal to 6.02 atoms oh, times 10 to the 23rd atoms for every one mole of atoms. So now we need to look at this problem and say, all right, I have moles. I need to get rid of moles. So I need moles on the bottom and add up. on top, so I would use this conversion factor, so for every one mole, 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd, so moles and moles will cancel out. Now on your calculator, we need to type in 0 0.240 times 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd. So please make sure that you are using your calculator correctly. If you type it in, you should get 1.4448 times 10 to the 23rd. If you did not get this, please go back and try typing it in differently. Um, if you don't know how to use your calculator, then this is going to be a huge frustration for calculations to come for the rest of the semester. So please, please, please let me know if you need help with how to put scientific notation into your calculator. Now the last thing we need to do is go back and say how many significant figures did I start with? And I started with three sig figs. So I need to have three in my final answer. And that 4 is not going to do anything to that 4. So 1.44 times 10 to the 23rd atoms of sodium, Na. And circle your final answer. And this is a nice, neat way. And finally, looking, uh, I can go the reverse Way. If I said that I'm starting with 3.42 times 10 to the 21 atoms 
of aluminum, how many moles is that? So again, we can set up our conversion factor because we know that one mole is 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd atoms, particles, ions, any of those. Or we know that there's 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd atoms for every one mole. So now we need to say, okay, well, this is what I'm starting with. So I need atoms down here. And I, what do I want? I want moles. What have I got? I've got atoms, right? It's what you want over what you got. So I need to use the conversion factor that has moles on top and atoms on the bottom. One mole over 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd atoms. So here is where it is very important, since both of my numbers have scientific notation, I would recommend using parentheses. And I would type in parentheses, 3.42 times 10 to the 21st, divided by, so I would have in parentheses, 3.42 times 10 to the 21, parentheses, close that, and hit divided by, and now another parentheses. 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd, and end that parenthesis. And your calculator should spit out 0 0.00568106, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Or it might have given it to you in scientific notation. So it could have been written, uh, your calculator might have said 5.68106 times 10 to the negative 3. Either one of those is correct. Hooray! If it gave you that jump up and down and celebrate that you are using your calculator correctly. The last thing we need to do is significant figures. I have three sig figs in my initial starting, so I need to have three at the end. So you can leave it as 0, 0.00, we can say, let's see, 568 moles of aluminum, or we could say 5.68 times 10 to the negative 3 moles of aluminum. Either one of those is perfect. You only need one. So again, this is going to help us in the future when we start dealing with stoichiometry, um, figuring out the mass uh, and the volume of, of um, different quantities when we are looking at concentration um, and different solutions. So this is going to come in handy for the rest of the semester.